Welcome back, Ashy Knuckle Faithful. I'm your host, B. Woods. My right hand man, Mosey Mo Rocks the Beat. Back again. Uh, we got Mark G uh, absent for this uh, recap episode. We're going to recap uh, UFC Fight Night Hermanson versus Strickland. We're going to talk a little bit about um, these spicy middleweights on the rise, bro. We got some action, man. We The middleweight division is eating up. We got the champ fighting um, pretty soon here. Rematch with um, Israel Adesanya taking on Bobby Knuckles. Yes, sir. Robert Whitaker. Robert. Robert Whitaker, man. It's gonna be a, it's, it's, every bench is on the, on the book, so I'm excited about it. I know we all are. And we got some welterweight prospects on the rise. The 170 division um, is heating up. Um, obviously, Hamzat Chemaev, you know, making his waves. But we got a couple new names we're going to uh, talk about in this episode, as well as um, giving a few shout outs to some other fighters on the card um, that had some really good performances. Namely, um, the women's bantamweight division, Alexis Davis taking on Juliana Soriolinko. Uh, Alexis Davis, UFC vet, got it, you know, unanimous decision win. Shout out to uh, Alexis Davis. And we're going to do a little flyweight shout out to Malcolm Gordon. Flyweight, getting this first round, getting a nice first round TKO. But, um, oh yeah, one more shout out to Hakeem Dawadu in the featherweight division, getting a three round unanimous decision win. I appreciate the cheese. I bet on the people that I just gave shout outs to. I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you. You are loved. And we can get right into it, man. Um, middleweight division, man, on the rise, bro. I mean, obviously we got Izzy, king of the king of the castle right now. You know, what I mean, he's undisputed middleweight champ. He looks he looked phenomenal in his last title defense versus um, Paulo Costa. That was that was a clinic. And now he's getting a rematch against, you know, I, I say I feel like really Robert Whitaker is one B in that middleweight division. I don't see I, I see him beating most of the middleweight contenders, but then against Izzy, I just think that he runs into another brick wall. We can talk about that more in depth, but that fight is on the books and that fight is next. And he is the king of this middleweight division. We got some prospects, man. It's namely, um, uh, Sean Strickland's the, the the guy who's on who's streaking right now. But let's go, let's go like a little bit deeper and talk about some of the people that you know fought on the earlier cards. The new guys, new there's some new blood. That's some new blood. Um, smiling Sam Sam Alvey took on Brendan Allen, and I'm pretty sure both of these guys are middleweights. They've been their whole careers. But I think this was a 205 fight, according to the website. It might have been one of them took it last minute. So that's why it was at 205 for the weight weight issues. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, that could be the case. But they're both career middleweights. So I'm counting them in this middleweight prospects on the rise category. Bro, Sam Elvey, um, he got pieced up pretty good. I don't know how this guy's still in the UFC. I guess like... It, it is, I don't know, I don't know. He, him and Dana White must be really cool. He got some dirt on Dana. I guess, because this all this man do is get bopped. Eight fights. Um, <laughs> it's phenomenal. He's on a streak, bro. If it was yeah. Call of Duty, he got one of those uh, death streaks going on. For real. This man should get some, an advantageous spawn, respawn. Mm. I mean, I think it's more of a, he brings excitement. That's why you know they they still got Cowboy. They had Diego Sanchez for so long. He tied, I think, the losing streak with BJ Penn. Yeah. Well, one thing about Cowboy though is he does put together strings of wins. Like he just oh, yeah. he'll just lose like once he gets to the cream of the crop. But he'll beat like he, the guys he's supposed to beat. Oh, I'm talking about uh, Sam Elvey. I think he's tied with BJ Penn for the record of uh, most losses. In a row. Wow. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to rag on Sam. I mean, I got uh, respect for anybody. Nope. Like, 
yeah, I want I got respect for anybody that laces them up and gets and jump in the cage. I'm just I just want to I was just kind of cracking a joke and really just giving a shout out to um Brendan Allen for um getting the dub. We had the um Ultimate Fighter supposed to be fight finale with Trishon Gore taking on Brian Battle. I think Gore got an injury, right? Yeah, he got injured uh before they were supposed to fight for the finale. Well, they got a chance to get that get it on um this Saturday. And uh unfortunately for me, I took Trishon Gore in a pretty close battle. I thought it was this fight could have gone either way. I was a little bit biased, obviously, because I took Trishon Gore to win, but Brian Battle got the unanimous decision victory. So shout out to Brian for taking the dub. And um yeah, tough sledding for the home team. I I, I bet that one and that was that that was an L. And Gore was the favorite too. Yeah, he was. Did you see did, did he have his trophy in the the post fight interview? Or was I tripping? Because I looked away I, and I came back and he was holding the trophy. I'm like, did he just bring it back out or did they hand it to him again? I'm not sure. I was bouncing between playing poker and watching the fights. Oh. And I had a sour taste in my mouth after at once they announced Brian Battle won, and I went right back to doing what I was doing. So I can't even I can't recall. Yeah, Brian Battle, he's he's got a tough road ahead of him if he expects to get to the title. Same with Krishan Gore. Both uh, yeah. up and coming guys though. You'll see uh, Gore they, again for sure. Well they have they have um they both have a long way to go. They're just, you know, these are some new these guys are just making their debut. I mean, Trishon Gore made his debut, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it was his, his first fight. So he got they got a long way to go. They just enter in the fray. Brendan Allen's um if he can string together some wins, he can jump into that, you know, into the top ten, top five. Um, next fighter on our list, uh, he gets my ashy knuckle moment of the whole card. Um, Chidi and Jaquani took on Mark Andre Barrio. Chidi got a sixteen second knockout. Yeah, so I got to watch the, that fight in its entirety, even though I was playing poker at the same time. It only lasted sixteen seconds, so that was a. Uh, that was a good one. I bet on Brendan Allen, Brendan Allen and Chidi. So I appreciate the cheese, my boys. Thank you. He's uh this is his debut as well, bro. As the younger brother of the other guy, uh, what was he called? Anthony. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what his uh little nickname was. Chidi's nickname is Bang Bang. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what his older brother's uh name was. Can't, I can't think of it right now. It's just the last name. You you recognize that last name? Yeah, yeah. I remember him being. I remember his older brother in the UFC. He was really. He's a pretty um slick kicker. I remember that about him. Like he had like that flashy shit. Um. Yeah, talk about this up. welterweight dude though. Well, oh yeah, we will. We'll get. We'll get to that. We'll get to that after we um, finish off these middleweights, man. Um, so Puna Lee Soriano took on Nick Maximoff in another uh, middleweight bout. Nick Maximoff got the split decision win. Um, you know a little bit something about this Nick Maximoff guy? Only what they said on TV. He's uh, part of the Diaz camp. I mean, they were in the crowd, at least Nate and uh, Jake Shields. Yeah, man, I wish I I wish I'd known that before I uh, took Puna Lee Soriano. I took him and uh, Soriano nice... had just lost to Brandon Allen in his last fight. Yeah, I know. Took a nice little fat juicy L there. Give I was him. hoping Soriano was the favorite too. I know. That's what I, I was kind of hoping that I was. I would just. Um, I kind of took that one. In the icing on the cake type deal, like just trying to get a little extra. Ended up getting bodied. But shout out to Nick uh, Maximoff. Um, good, good, strong victory. That was a that was a good fight. It was a back and forth battle, but um, 
I think Nick deserved to take the victory. Um, last but not least, though, uh, Sean Strickland took on Jack Hermanson. Um, they t- as a, in the five round main event. Sean took the um, dude. That was like he dominated that fight. One judge gave the fight to uh, Hermanson. Sal Amato, in fact, that's who the judge was. Wow! And this, he's a a great boxing judge, am I right? Yeah. Maybe. Well, I, was, I don't know about great boxing judge, but he is a boxing judge. Oh, he's a famous boxing judge. Yes. Long tenured. He's been in the game for a long time. And the thing is, like, which 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 is surprising that he would give the victory to Jack when Sean was boxing Jack's head off. Like, it was really basically just a, a stand-up kickboxing fight for the most part. I mean, there were some grappling exchanges. Obviously, Strickland Jack's a grappler. Yeah, gra- Jack, Jack's gonna, he has to get the fight to the ground. Yeah. But Sean... He stuffed everything. I, would, I really think Sean should have put, could have pushed the pace more and made it more like... Um, and kind of punish Jack a little bit more. Like, I think that would have helped his case out, but he was in control the whole way and dominated the whole way, in my mind. Uh, uh, he said he, he was nervous or something with everything. Mm. Because the, I guess, what, what happens if you win, moving forward with him, kind of nervous. And he yeah, started he said- saying some crazy stuff afterwards. Yeah, that's typical Sean, though. Sean, Sean got some loose lips, man. He'll say some crazy shit. What did he say? I forgot what he said, but he said something like, thank you to the fans for making me a rich bum or something. Not bum, but I forgot. I forgot what he said. It was something something wild. Yeah, that's that's about as par for the course for, uh, for Sean. He said something to the effect of, like, he'll do whatever it takes to get a title shot. If it means sucking some dick, he'll do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's a goofy, so he'll say some, he'll say whatever. Yeah, he wasn't talking as much trash as he was um, when he fought Uriah Hall until the like, what last twenty seconds? He started saying crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. He, he he called uh, Jack Romanson. He said, "Hit me, pussy," or something like that. I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> Isn't he yeah. gonna let him say it? And I watched the replay, so yep, Disney let him say it. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think's next for Sean, man? We, um, what do you see him? What do you see him getting matched up? Because this middleweight, this top five, I mean, obviously the champs booked, Whitaker's booked. They got to dance, right? So that's number. That's the champion and number one. Now the guys right underneath that, we just saw um, Paulo Costa take on the Italian Stallion. Marvin Vittori, and Vittori got the victory. So Vittori is in the win column. Obviously, you know, Costa has is on two-fight losing streak now. And we got two other top prospects, Blonde Brunson, and why am I missing his name for a second? I'm, I'm losing. Cannoneer. Jared Cannoneer. They're matched up. What happens with Strickland now? Does Strickland get Costa? On a decline, or does he get, um, does he get the Italian stallion? What do you think? Well, next fight for the title is definitely the winner of Cannoneer and Brunson. That's already been said. So, depending on the outcome of Whitaker and Adesanya, it it it's so many variables to it. So we'll have to wait till after this coming Saturday to figure that out. But if he wants a fight that's going to propel him, it would definitely be Vittori. Yeah, I think Vittori. Well, Vittori, if he can, if he can get a victory over Martin Vittori, that throws him into the direct line of um, a short list for guys who should be fighting for the title next. That definitely puts him in top three. Right. Um, that's a dangerous fight for him though, because Vittori is tough and. He's not a uh, he's not a guy you can easily get rid of at all. That's a really tough matchup. Now that I think about it, um, a lot of volume with uh, Strickland. Not as much as in this last fight, but previously, a lot of volume. 
Yeah, you you nailed it when you said he reminds you of like uh Max Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz, Max type. He is a heavy volume striker, mostly mostly punches, good cardio, pushes the pace. That's that's about that's his standard mo usually for um fights where he's the victor. He usually can do that and um keep that pressure on. How do you think he'd fare against someone like um like Costa? Costa's been kind of streaking the wrong way after that Adesanya fight. Yeah, he must have drank some really strong wine. Yeah, man. Um, that Brazilian wine must be real, bro. No, I don't think they'll give him Costa. I think he'll probably end up fighting Vittori or the loser out of Brunson and Cannoneer. That's what I think, strictly. Well, why not Costa? You think Costa just because Costa's a big name and he is in that still? He's still in the top like he's top five, five right? He's number five. Yeah, yeah. I see Hermanson against Costa next, just because they're okay. both coming off losses. Okay, that make I, I can see that too. And I mean, you're right though. I can't see him fighting the loser of Brunson versus Cannoneer as well. And when I mean him, I'm saying Sean Strickland. Yep. So he got. I mean, Sean got. Like, look. I saw we saw his MTV cribs. Man is a uh, man. He wild man. I mean, and then this this fight didn't help him because he didn't get a win bonus, so he didn't make a. I mean, he made decent money, I would assume, but you know, like after they paid coaches and taxes and all that, um, it's, not, it's hard to tell what their take home is. Plus, you got to understand that this is assuming he fights. More times this year, because I mean, like, I mean, if, he, if this is his only fight this year, then you know he only made so much money, and those 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 performance bonuses come in handy in in that regard. So, um, shout to Sean Strickland. I hope um, it's looking good, man. He's looking. I appreciate him. I want to say personally, thank you for winning me this cheese, and he's looking like he's headed in the right direction for that title shot. It reminds me of uh, you remember Young Bisbing when he had the shaved head. Yes, don't he look like like he could be his cousin or something? You know, you took the words out my mouth, bro. They, they gotta be cousins. Like, <laughs> yeah, definitely cousins. You ready to talk about this welterweight though? Oh my goodness! So, bro, we got some welterweight prospects on the rise, man. Um. I'm a, there's a, obviously, like, like we said before, um, Hamzat Chemaev has kind of been taking the MMA, especially the MMA Twitterverse by storm. Everybody's on the train. Your boy RJ, he, he's the conductor. Word. This man be sending me, listen, this man sends me every training video, every like rumor mill, anything that, anything involving Hamzat Chemaev, RJ's on it. But he sent me that the thing. conductor. He the conductor yeah. of the hype train. Choo, choo. Choo. And when full steam along, bro, he will not be derailed. Um, he's one of those prospects on the rise. I mean, he's on a short list of guys who you think when you think about the, the injection of youth into the division, the top is already kind of established. We know who we got at the top with, you know, Kobe Covington, the, obviously the champion, Kamaru Usman, um, reaching GOAT status at this point because he's lapping the division. But he's got some guys that now um, who can make for some viable contenders for him in Hamzat Shemaev and a few other guys we're going to mention right now. Um, one dark horse that we we can't like keep out, a guy who's been working on his wrestling, a guy who moved down from the middleweight division, a guy who also talks a ton of shit in his fights. Guy who's a finisher. Oh, Kevin Holland. Probably. Kevin Holland. I forgot he moved down. He's in um, 170 pound division as well now. So Kevin Holland can be added to that short list of new prospects on the rise as well. He he's making his welterweight debut pretty soon here, right? Yes, I forgot who he's fighting, but yes, he's, he's making his debut at welterweight. Soon. Makes sense because he's a very small middleweight too. Like he he it, to me it, he didn't. He's kind of like uh, what Izzy would be in 205. 
Like he he's not a natural middle. Like most of those middleweight dudes are huge. You know what I mean? Like when you look at Romero, that's he's a middleweight. Like that's that dude's like two hundred and five thirty pounds outside of fight day. I'm not fight day, but weigh in day. He's only one eighty five on weigh in day. And guys like Costa and Vittori, they're both like in the two twenties before weigh-in day. So um, good luck to Kevin Holland. Now, a couple other guys. I think he, I thought he had a fight booked. I'm I'm looking for it right now. Nothing yet. Matt Mm. Brown. This can't be right. If he's going to fight Matt Brown, I'm, I'm surprised. Why? That's perfect fight for his intro. Matt Brown's come off a win, right? He's on a little streak, isn't he? Matt Brown? Yeah, yeah. He's the immortal, bro. He got, he got I know he's he an OG, but Matt, Matt's not an easy fight for nobody. Fighting Brazilian Cowboy. He's fighting Oliveira? Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense, too. Oh, he's fighting, in fact, on the... Who's on that card? Kobe Covington and uh, Masvidal card. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. And he is promoting himself on OnlyFans. Lovely. (laughs) That boy said, this dick ain't free. I don't think he's doing stuff like that. (laughs) Are you sure? I don't want to want to know, but. Exactly. What what, what does it matter? He's he's already fighting in his underwear. Hey, man. Get that paper. I mean, do what you do, bro. Paige, ben, not Paige Van Zandt, but the other girl, um, she's, uh, I think she's um, a straw weight. Jessica Andrade is on there. Yes. Probably she is also. Of fighters. No, the, she's really young. She's like 22 or something. Um, Kay Hansen, she has one. I mean, look, do what you got to do. Get that paper. UFC... Um, pay obviously needs to be supplemented, so do what you gotta do. Do what you must. Um, prospects on the rise, bro. We got oh. Philip Rowe. We did. We, got, we gotta talk about Shaq Cap. We will. Okay. Um, Philip Rowe, Fresh Prince. He's on a three fight. Well, he's three and four, three and one in his last four fights. All wins by knockout or TKO. Philip Rowe is uh. He calls himself the Fresh Prince. He's a big welterweight, bro. I go, it's tall. He's six foot three, eighty inch reach. Jesus. Yeah. A welterweight. A welterweight, bro. Yeah, it's like that's like Neil Magny type shit. Yeah, man. Um, three and one in his last four, so definitely a prospect to watch out for um, in this coming event in the, in the coming future because he. I mean, look, he's getting it done by knockout. And when you do that, when you put together highlight reels, when you finish in fights, that will get you noticed quickly, especially with the kind of um, physical statistics that he has. He's 32 years old, so right in his athletic prime. So shout out to Philip Rowe for the cheese. My boy got me paid. I appreciate you, player. I saw you on that betting card, and I took a, little, I took a shot. Appreciate you. But um, the guy that we definitely should give some mention to, Shavkat Rachmanov. Rachmanov. I think I said it. Rachmanov. You said it correctly. I tried. Well, I don't know how you say his first name because they were saying all kinds of crazy things on the. the I think it's like card. Shavkat. They said Shao Khan. They said Shat Cap. They said all kinds of stuff. We can call him Shao Kahn. Hey, this dude. He looks like a Mortal Kombat character, bro. He be finishing people. He put them away. Yes, he does. He ain't playing. This, bro, if you look at his record, that's all he does is finish fights. It's I mean, finishes? it's not all finishes, but it's a very high percentage. I think he has 17 wins with like 15 finishes or 14 finishes. And he doesn't. He don't. He don't got no type. He ain't got no type. Fifteen and zero. Oh my god! Seven wins by knockout. 
and seven wins by submission. He ain't got no type. That man said, so he went the decision once? This man said he don't care how he gets the fight finished, he will finish. This man got seven subs, seven knockouts. Wait, is it now eight knockouts because of the one he just got? Oh, I don't know. Because he, he got a knockout Saturday, too. So he's eight knockouts and seven subs? Yep, this man finishes fights. The nomad don't play. Um, this six foot one, one seventy, twenty eight years old, bro. He looks like. I mean, I know, I know, Hamza is getting a lot of shine as being, you know, one of those young guys to watch out for who can be contending for the title. But this man got to be on that list too. I think we got to give Shavkat his flowers right now because he needs some names, obviously, to prove himself and get, you know, the recognition and get into that top five. Or get into the rankings, you know what I mean. But he he looks the part, and he's putting together the highlight reel to get himself in position for the goal. Because damn, bro, like that's balanced. Like he he has just as many subs as knockouts, if not more, and he finishes every basically. I think he's three and zero in the UFC. Yeah, he's currently three and zero in the UFC. Yep. So shout out to shout out to my boy Shad Khan. Shad Khan. <laughs> Call him Shad Khan. My bad. I ain't mean a my bad mustache. Not you, brother. Um Shao Khan. Also known as Shavkat Rachmanov, the nomad. He's definitely getting somebody in the uh the bottom thirteen, I'd say. Who would you who would you give him? Who would you give him at this point? Who doesn't have a dance partner? I mean, they could give him Pazanibio or Jingalane. See what he could do. Okay. Uh, Jang Lang Lee's coming off a loss. Ponz Nibio is as well, right? Isn't, isn't, didn't Ponz Nibio lose his last fight? Uh, oh, Jeff Neal, right? Jeff Neal was his last yeah, he fight. he just lost split decision, though. To Jeff Neal. Okay. So, let's see. Maybe... Hmm. Or you could fight uh, Ponz Nibio. Not Ponz Nibio. Uh, Baeza. Was it Caramel Thunder? He's mm-hmm. another prospect too, so it'll work out for both of them. I can see that. Unless they want to move him straight into the rankings. But welterweight's pretty deep. Just looking at the the whole top fifteen, you're like, damn. Yeah, we got this top fifteen looks strong, and we we injecting a lot of they're injecting a lot of talent, kind of at the right time because some of the guys at the top are you know getting a little bit long in the tooth. So this this is gonna be good. I mean, we got I'm keeping my eye out for um this this Rockmanov kid. I'll definitely be um placing some future wagers with this young blood. Also, my boy Phil Rowe. I'm a, I'll, I'll, I'll ride with you too. So, um, beautiful. We also, I also want to give a shout out to um, some a couple featherweight featherweights on this same UFC fight night, Hermanson versus Strickland card. Uh, Julian Erosa and Steven Peterson. They had a they had one they had a nice one, bro. That was a battle. Slobber knocker. Yes. For sure. Bruh, like, they went at each other. To open up the card with something like that, beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. That's why these cards, they, even though they don't have the, the draw power with names that people will recognize, these dudes are trying to prove a point, so they're going to go all out just so they could get that name. You know, here's how I view these cards, man. For me, I, I talent scout on these cards. Cause like all these guys on the the pre er, the early prelims and the prelims, that's a lot of times you can find some favorable betting matchups. Yeah, that you can find some like, that too. You know what I mean? Like you can like you like yo like these guy that guy is definitely going to win. Like as far as his skill, like I mean, not obviously there's no definite because it's a fight, but some of these guys are you know making their debuts and they're extremely talented. But no one knows who they are yet. Like they don't have a name yet. 
and that's like the sweet spot where you can get a really nice bet in there. So um, I like to watch these prelims, uh, um, not prelims, but these free fight night cards to kind of scout out some talent and see the new people coming in. Obviously, you'll get a lot. You'll get a lot of veteran action as well. But and but um, if it's free, it's me. So I'm watching it because it's free, and you can get a kind of get a feel for some of the new fighters coming in and some of the new prospects. So it's it's always worth it to be. And like you said, these guys go. They I think I feel like every fight they go all out. That's why I don't believe in performance bonuses. I think it's silly. They should get paid a flat rate. Period. Win or lose, There's no, no one's gonna fight harder because for some some incentive. They they're getting they're fighting hard to win. Period. So I feel like these cards don't get as much respect as they deserve because they don't have the name recognition as like some of those stacked pay-per-views do. But man, the action is usually really good. Because they got a lot of for real. A lot of young hungry lions are on these cards, man. And you just think like you said, the, you see it in the energy, like the 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 card, especially when you like Bro, we opened up the first, the very first fight of the card was a flyweight fight, first round TKO. You know what I mean? That energy and that energy carried through the next fight, TKO. Next fight, TKO. You know, um, Phil Phil Rowe TKO Jason Witt, then um, Almeida TKO Marquez. It's like that energy, man, is like on those free cards, bro. Like everybody in that room, or it's just. It's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And a lot of times they just get overlooked because it's not a lot of star power. So it just, no one cares about anything but the main event. And in this main event, it was a bit of a letdown as far as like pure entertainment's concerned from someone casuals. This is all whispers that I hear from casuals. Yeah, yeah that's why I read. That's why I was like, oh, is this fight that bad? And it, it wasn't that bad. No. It wasn't bad at all. Like I, I thought it was unfortunately for me, I I had the I was multitasking, so I could only pop in and out. But from what I saw, it was good. It was stand it was what I expected. I expected Sean Strickland to pressure, move forward, and volume, heavy volume. And he did just that. If and I thought that if Hermanson couldn't get him to the ground, that it would be a long night for Hermanson. And that's what it was. Yep. It went just as expected. Um. Yeah, Kevin was like, F- Kevin told me that fight was trash. He wasn't. He wasn't pleased at all. Well, this quick recap. We gotta do the next pod with Marky in a few days. So, you ready to call it? Yes, sir. Um, if you like this content, please hit that subscribe button, like, and that little bell at the top you see. Click that too for notifications. I am B Woods. He is Mosey P. Oh, wait, wait. YouTube, Ashy Knuckles MMA. Also, you can if you if you have any comments, questions, hit us up in the chat in the comments. We'll talk back. We'll definitely interact. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter at Ashy Knuckles MMA. I'm B. I'm B Woods. That's Mosey P. We both are on um, Twitter at the, under that handle. So hit us up. All right, zip it up. Zip it out. Let's go. Peace.